Okay, so I just tweeted this. Uh, I'm sure you guys have all seen this little video. If you haven't, <laughs> let's start with that because it's inspirational. Okay, so you can see that pretty well. Uh, you can't read it, so I'll read it to you. On December 5th, 2022, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory's National Ignition Facility made history demonstrating fusion ignition for the first time. Hang on, that's that's not quite true. We, we've uh, hit fusion ignition before uh, in a laboratory setting. Okay, maybe I should read finish reading before I... Fusion ignition is one of the most significant scientific challenges ever undertaken by humanity, aka the smart monkeys on the surface of the Earth. We'll be a bit more serious. This is a big thing. <laughs> uh, in, the in the 1960s, pioneering Livermore lab scientists led by physicist John Knuckles hypothesized that lasers could be used to achieve fusion ignition. This is a pretty baller picture, eh? This looks like, what's his name? Uh, Hammond from Top Gear, no? But uh, that's, a, that's a sick picture. And the music? The achievement? It's kind of moving. Today we celebrate this historic achievement with our scientific, academic, and industrial partners. And me, here on YouTube. Fusion drives the sun and the stars. Well, it doesn't just do that, you know. They should have added here. It's also like the main sort of engine for creating pretty much most of the matter in our universe. Like most of the heavy elements, right? You know, without fusion, there would be no heavy elements and of the sort so it, it's not just you know the thing driving the sun and the stars it's driving like the evolution of matter in the universe in a sense nuclear fusion occurs when two atomic nuclei combine to form a single heavier nucleus there's other ways uh th there's all kinds of types of nuclear fusion so we'll get into this because you know you probably hear about people talking about fusion you know, we'll speculate even in into the beyond uh, in today's video because that's going to be exciting. Like, you know, there's there's other versions of fusion we could potentially do further into the future, which would uh, give us more energy. But there's problems with all of this sort of stuff, so we'll we'll get there. Let's let's just start with what's happened recently. Fusion energy released is greater than laser energy delivered to the target, passing the threshold of ignition. So it's important to recognize here. What they're talking about is the lasers, right? The energy that the lasers put into the system, right? And then the nuclear fusion reaction occurs and that nuclear fusion reaction, the energy that comes out of it was uh, more than the, the, the lasers. So it's not like there's any energy being uh, like created from nothing here. Uh, you got to remember, you know, the second law of conservation, right? the first law of uh, thermodynamics, which is, you know, like energy can't be created or destroyed. Um, and so with that in mind, right, not, that's not happening here. So people, I think, are getting the wrong idea from what I've seen on Twitter and everything. Uh, I've seen a lot of people misinterpreting this. Matter or energy is not being like literally created <laughs> from nothing. This is just sort of uh, this process, nuclear fusion, is a way of uh, bringing things together and turning it into other stuff. And so, you know, we'll talk about it more in a minute so we can watch some stuff. But nuclear fusion, you've probably heard many times, it brings hydrogen together, turns it into helium. And then there's all sorts of other things that happen that uh, come out of this, this combination, right? And, you know, this is by proxy of E equals MC squared, Einstein's famous energy mass equivalents, which suggests they're the same, pretty much the same thing, right? And so you, when you bring these two hydrogen together, you get out, uh, you know, neutrinos and oftentimes in pop sci you'll see they say energy what the fuck do they mean by energy well they just mean <laughs> like heat and, and and radiation okay uh, i think they could be a bit more specific here than just saying energy because you know we don't really know about any like pure energy is not really a thing um <laughs> you know it's always in some kind of form okay so here uh why this is important right you know if we can release heat and radiation well very simply, you could just put some water around this thing, right? Generate some steam. That steam would then uh, push a turbine, move a turbine around, or you know, pump some pistons. But look, if you if you move the turbine, right, you put a magnet on the turbine, and then the electric current is going to be generated through the center of that turbine because uh, you move a, ma a magnetic uh, 
magnetic field around, you'll get electric charge and the same vice versa. So this is why this is really big. Uh, and the other big part, right, is that you get more energy than you, you than you put in because it's 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 utilizing the the elements that go into it and turning them into different forms of energy essentially, right? And then for, with also there's no like really bad byproducts of this reaction. Like we're not getting you know the the nasty stuff you get out of uh, nuclear fission react reactions, which is what we've done for a long time at nuclear power plants. This is also nuclear. This is nuclear fusion. That's nuclear fission. Um, so there's there's quite a lot of differences, but it's important to make this distinction because people are scared of nuclear. Right? This is nuclear. The only thing is, there's no nasty, you know, radioactive byproducts, which is awesome. And so that's all the easy stuff out of the way. Now we can get into the more of the complex stuff that's going on here. And we, we're going to talk about it, like this exact experiment, briefly read over it. And I think when you have a good knowledge of physics, right, when they, when they talk about like, you know, they pump some lasers into this little gold cavity and then they, they, it doesn't hit the center little pallet. I'll, I'll explain this in greater detail in a minute. But, you know, it, it hits the walls and then the walls generate x-rays and the x-rays compress the, they call it the fusion, uh, what do they call it? The fusion fuel at the center, right? And it, it compresses it to the point where it ignites and then fusion it. But that is, that's, that's like lying to people, all right? That's not really, that's a baby talk. <laughs> you know, how the hell are x-rays just being generated? We'll talk about this. It, it has to do with quantum mechanics, okay? And this is why they would just skip over these things and say these things which are like kind of dumbed down versions so people can just follow along. Um, but I can explain that for you guys. It's not that complex. It would just take an extra, say, four minutes of explanation. Uh, I'm just going to go all over the place, so you have to kind of stick around to get the whole picture. I created the world's first ever post-quantum VPN. The Mac version was supposed to come out today. Mac OS, I compiled all the binaries a week ago, and I've been working hard to get that out. I've had one more dependency issue pop up last night. Um, so we'll fix that, and it'll be out very soon. Okay, so sit tight. Uh, it's almost there. Drac was the daddy. All right. Today we celebrate this milestone, generations in the making. Yep. This is, guys, so after this video, I'll tell you why this is big, okay? Like a lot of people I think might not be able to understand the um, implications of this. Uh, unprecedented capability to support the US stockpile stewardship program. Yes. And enables the next steps towards clean fusion energy for the future. Beautiful song. 913 before when i first opened this earlier it was only on 500 so i'm glad this is getting some fucking attention this is great to see yes all right so where should we take this why is this important why why should anyone give a shit i'm glad you asked this will literally open up humanity's future if we can turn this you know from if we can get this out of the lab and create some real nuclear reactors with this nuclear fusion reactors that is what this will do is basically allow us to generate energy for our electric vehicles, for all our other green technologies, which they've been called, right, uh, in, a sa in a clean way, which means, you know, we won't have to burn fossil fuels and generate all those greenhouse emissions, all those greenhouse gases. So we can literally, we'll be able to power civilization on Earth without adding to climate change. That's why this is significant. That's one reason. Another massive reason, which I think is far greater in terms of significance to our species, which is it basically unlocks the stars for us. With fusion, we'd be able to generate enough energy to, you know, this is, this is further along in the future, right? We're not going to be able to do this anytime soon. But now that we've demonstrated we can, we can do nuclear fusion and get net positive, it's really important to realize that we can now potentially harness this in rocket technology uh you'd you'd have to put it in in at in orbit right uh and look the moon base is around the corner right we can we can construct these things in orbit or on the moon and then with a, a nuclear fusion reactor for an engine uh in deep deep space probes you're talking like you know like you, you could we could journey to the stars at that point because we'll have the energy we'll have the engines required to do such uh, we could already do so with like nuclear explosions, but that 
that's been outlawed in space and uh, no one wants to do that so and you might think i'm being a bit of a dreamer here and yeah sure i obviously am but this tech and these engines have been dreamt up in the minds of uh, sci-fi writers for a long time for very good reason right this sort of this the, the amount of energy that you can get out of nuclear fusion uh, engines is immense and it's it's like uh the other big part of it is it's like never ending right once you get these reactions going you can sustain it if you have enough energy to get it going in the first place um and then you know you could just keep generating energy which is really really awesome so that's another big fact that i missed right and then also coming back to this experiment itself um it's really important to understand here as well there's a big caveat massive caveat which is you know how they're saying there's more energy outputting from the nuclear fusion reaction than the lasers but <laughs> there's not more energy f to get the lasers started so unfortunately they did it there is a little caveat here which is um there was about so i believe the energy outputs what was it 300 uh megajoules is that what it was so let's have a look the average human uh i think in america it came out early this year consumes about 284 uh giga gigajoules per capita per year which means 284 billion joules per year in the average american right that sounds like a lot and it is a fucking lot so this experiment only yielded uh was it 300 megajoules we'll, we'll confirm this in just a second uh mega is you know that's a, a million joules so you, you know 300 million joules i think was the total it's around this number right so uh, uh, the, the specific number is not too important but the the uh, you know the scales we're talking is important so it's it's within the millions right of joules and you can see we're still a while off than getting to <laughs> 284 billion per person right per year so where are all the live streaming I'll, I'll come to that after this rose so you can see this is just but it's the first step okay and this you might think oh that sounds like it's miles away then no 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 it could be really close because now that we've demonstrated net fusion is possible like net positive energy out of the reaction hopefully significant amounts of money inflow into this this program and other programs that now try and do similar things and i think it will i think for the last 30 years 50 years people have been investing huge amounts of money to try and see this exact thing that we've demonstrated on the 5th of december demonstrated and now we've done that i think not just in private investors but governments will start to invest way more money in this stuff and that's so exciting man that's so exciting we've demonstrated it's possible we have done it like this was meant to be impossible according to some joules two megajoules okay i was i was 100 i was one megajoule off um i have a special message to listeners who want to work on exciting challenging and important problems we're hiring <laughs> <laughs> big fan of this guy so fusion fusion is an essential process in modern nuclear weapons and fusion also has the potential for abundant clean energy as you have heard and we'll hear more the breakthrough at NIF <clears throat> does have ramifications for clean energy more immediately this achievement will advance our national security in at least three ways First, it will lead to laboratory experiments that help NNSA defense programs continue to maintain confidence in our deterrent without yep. nuclear explosive testing. Second, it underpins the credibility of our deterrent by demonstrating world-leading expertise in weapons-relevant weapons technologies. That is, we know what we're doing. <laughs> Third, continuing to assure our allies that we know what we're doing and continuing to avoid testing will advance our nonproliferation goals, also increasing our national security. The achievement we celebrate today illustrates that big, important accomplishments often take longer and require more effort than originally thought, and that these accomplishments are often more than worth that time and effort that they took.
Oh, there's heaps of people talking. I missed what everyone else was saying. Or as the president might say. Mm -hmm. Right. America. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got a bill, don't worry. I, I do think he probably did say this is a BFD. <laughs> Researchers at Livermore and around the world have been working on this moment for more than 60 years. Was it New Zealand? So, what does this accomplishment do? Two things. First, Ooh. it strengthens our national security because it opens a new realm for maintaining a safe, secure, and effective nuclear deter deterrent in an age where we do not have nuclear testing. Ignition allows us to replicate for the first time. Nuclear deterrent. I feel like they're just chucking that in there to like be flashy and convince all the dumb apes that don't really know what this fucking news is about. Because like, really? Uh, yeah, like in a, like a superficial way, it's like, look, we can do fusion. Like, don't attack us. We're, we're better than you. Apart from that, like, you know, we've been dropping fusion bombs on people for a long time. You know, so uh, it, that's a superficial thing to say. It would be like adding um, a power drill to our toolbox in building this clean energy economy. Come on, that's a terrible analogy. A power drill? A power drill? No. <laughs> it's like adding <laughs> a power drill? That's what you're setting as an analogy for nuclear fusion? No. I'm sorry, is this woman a physicist? She can't be. And we've heard from professors that interest among students has never been higher, which is terrific. Temple and voice. that's why the Biden-Harris administration is aiming to capitalize on this moment. Today's announcement is a huge step forward uh, to the president's goal. Never been high. I wonder if I can uh, take some credit for that. <laughs> Trying to get people to go and study physics find other ways to progress to reach fusion please no one say thanks biden for fusion fuck me this has been <laughs> this has nothing to do with biden or anything he has done in his time or even the last few presidents this has everything to do with the physicist uh man that makes me angry like if if biden starts taking credit for this uh jesus christ like that's so wrong on so many levels. No shit, this should be an achievement for humanity. And they keep using it as a way to talk about, you know, this signifies the strength of the US. Uh, which, look, obviously they were going to do. There's no avoiding that. And at this point in time, you can't blame them with everything going on in the world. But at the same time, let's be honest, like this is an achievement for humanity. This will be remembered uh, in the history books of science. And with yeah, Nobel Prizes for sure. But um, yeah, so I guess this is getting quite political, you know. I you guys want me to skip? workforce that's diverse and inclusive this is what it looks like for america to lead and we're just getting started and in that century it took it took so many different kinds of advances that ultimately came together to the point that we could replicate that fusion activity in this in this controllable way in a laboratory uh, and and I think so it's just here I am saying oh this will be easy the next steps and it just a century later and we're still like banging rocks together <laughs> look that could that could be how it plays out unfortunately if I'm honest right but look in principle it, the next steps we should be able to do it you know so why not you, know, you can do it in ten years let's do it twenty fifty comes around the people at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. National Ignition Facility reached this ignition milestone because of the work others did before them. Their analysis Standing of data and models, their continued pursuit to have the best possible facility, and their sheer excellence and grit. This would be like, look, this is an interesting point here, right? With what's happened right now with the 2024, it's going to be really interesting to see what political parties have to say about this and how much investment they're willing to make i think this is going to largely depend on the public's reaction to this right to this announcement i unfortunately think the public are gonna not do much of a reaction because they don't know what the fuck fusion even is 
So unfortunately, uh, you know, they probably should have invested in communicators a bit earlier. But hopefully there is a decent reaction. And they're like, oh, the future. What, like, whatever they mean. <laughs> but um, I'm kind of worried this is going to go over a lot of people's heads and they're not going to react all that much. And, you know, the, the political parties directly, you know, their, their response in science funding is proportional to the public's reaction. So... I, I'm, I really don't know what we're going to see from the American... And why am I talking about this as an Australian citizen, you might think? Like, dude, this doesn't concern you. No, it does, because I'm a human, right? I'm a humanist, and I care about the world progressing. The U.S. is clearly still at the front, the forefront of tech and science. And so whatever the U.S. does is really important for the rest of the world. And I want to see the U.S win and succeed and progress our species forward right and so that means investing in fusion and i hope the political parties for 2024 i hope that <laughs> bogan lives matter i hope there's some kind of uh you know little war there with how much uh funding goes into this area and hopefully you know they, they start to compete with how much funding and they just more and more and more and more that would be amazing to see but unfortunately i'm just thinking would trump what would trump do do, do we think Trump would invest? Wasn't he's this is hilarious because wasn't Trump's like uncle or something or his grandfather like a fusion physicist? That's the thing, right? I'm pretty sure he was, which is like it shocked me. I almost I almost had a brain aneurysm when I heard this. <laughs> my prediction is Trump is going to come out and say my uncle invented fusion and fusion is here and I will give it to you. <laughs> What's the bet Trump takes the credit for fusion? Because he's his uncle or something, like, did some small role. Oh my god, that's coming. This is coming. Trump's going to start calling himself a physicist. I Like, surely Biden, though, will... Surely for 2024, the, the whole uh, Democratic Party is going to promise huge funding. If they don't, well, our species failed our... Failed, you know, like, ourselves, right? They couldn't real, realize how much of an achievement this was and uh you know <laughs> i i really hope that's not what happens right that would be tragic but also comedic for our own species not to recognize that you know we just we just accomplished something and look if we want to invest money into it now we, we our engineers will probably be able to figure it out we just need to give them some money it's taking a star and, and putting it's it in got a oil stocks he's got, what do you mean he's got oil stocks he's cheap you're kidding that energy that goes forever it's wow. what iron man has in his chest okay <laughs> now it's, we this, understand. it's this now okay. you understand do you when he says the thing that that fucking iron man has in his chest and now you understand tony stark was able to build this in a cave with a bunch of scraps <laughs> yeah yeah fucking marvel